and then just kill towers and win the game. Looking at Team Shaker's lineup, easy to execute, click the buttons, you don't have to do anything special, yeah. you know, to win the game. And uh, looking at how EG utilizes the last pick, I just don't feel like whenever I see someone like an underworld, yeah, this is it, this is gonna win them the game, because it, th this is not a hero, especially against the matchup that they're facing. Well then, if uh, if you got any parting words, Peter, because it's looking like it might be a 2-0, so grace us with something, because I think, I think we might not be able to catch you for a game three at this rate. Yeah, I'm gonna clean 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> You, you you don't also agree, right? I right, mean, Jenkins? It, it, you see something that evil geniuses. Man, I mean, I mean, come on! It's a, it's an IO gyrocopter with an Ember Spirit. I, We've got an Underlord yeah, for some yeah, sustain. Yeah, yeah. See, I do. Huh? If this is different huh? teams, if we didn't just witness what we just witnessed, uh -huh. an wow. absolute massacre that was borderline traumatizing to even watch, I think that the draft on EG. You've got more disables, right? I could see them running around as a ball and uh -huh. snowballing with Ember Stun, Gyro Stun, Rubik Stun, uh, Abyssal Underlord. You know, he's got this root. Like, you have all these heroes that have great disables. You can play really fast paced. Team Secret, they basically just have Mars and then like Bear Root, right? And Bear Fear. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that great. The problem is, I think the lanes for Secret are great. And if they win the lanes and they snowball, like the panel was mentioning, they can take towers very quickly between the heroes that they have. So it, it as is true in a lot of games of Dota, it yeah. depends on who wins the lanes. It depends on who can snowball from a good early game. Well, uh, I like Evil Genius's lineup. I, I, I think they got what it takes. Okay. Okay, I, I it, it I feels good. It. Let me just say, Jacobs, it feels good to be casting a series with evil geniuses involved where people can't call me biased because Secret slaughters them so heavily that This is true. You know? This is true. We all <laughs> we always get the NA bias card. You see, here's the issue is I I play a lot of pubs. And you know, I yeah. play pubs with the NA players, so I'll happen to know a lot more about the NA players. But I've had the the great opportunity to play with these uh, European players while being in Ukraine. I'm very, mm -hmm. very happy about that. Get a bit of insight on what it's like to play against Puppy. And I gotta say, I would literally rather play against anybody else other than Puppy. He plays position five Puck, and it is not fun to play against. He just somehow loses the lane to me because he had crappy heroes, and then he just is level three levels above me at the end of laning stage. I don't know how he did it. I literally need to watch the replay. The guy's a goddamn god. I seriously don't get it. Puppy's a menace. Well, Jake, it said it's gonna come very much down to the laning phase here, which is something that Evil Geniuses, what I liked about their draft here is it felt like they uh, they learned from game one. And I was just surprised by their approach to game one because I haven't seen a single team like take a very clear, split pushy, slower approach to the game and manage to come out with a victory, right? Everything seems to be very much snowball-y, uh, very much about team fight, taking early objectives right now. And this time they do have some team fight. This time they do have some fast heroes that want to be able to fight. But, as you were saying, Secret may still have the advantage when it just comes down to the early game. It just all depends on how these laning phase go and whether or not Evil Geniuses can actually protect their towers nice and early. And that creep that was following Zai there, that was very convenient for splitting that <laughs> rocket barrage damage there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it certainly was. Otherwise, there's a small chance that he could have actually died yep. there. And you could see oh, look at him, he dodged. He dodged most of the rocket barrage damage there. That was beautiful for Zai. Went outside of vision, did a nice little ring around the rosy. Blocks yeah. the camp too. That's interesting to see that he does that. Giving the Phoenix level two. The Epster's level two now. He's got the crown, 400 gold, and he's huge. And we're seeing a lot more of this where uh, the offlaner kind of screws off from the lane and gives the support that second level. If you're with the Tiny, if you're with the Phoenix, it feels like um, it, it just looks a lot better when that support gets that fast because they're they're so weak at level one yeah, think some of, of them. Think about if you have a Phoenix in your lane, like how do you lose the lane? Like this guy dies at level one because he's just got fire spirits. Are you going to die because Mars is level one? Like is that going to lose you the lane? I feel like Mars is pretty good at level one. Tiny yeah. as well, like you get the avalanche toss and all of a sudden you're incredibly powerful. Same thing yeah. with like Batrider, Pudge, these heroes have these ridiculous level two spikes. Like it just makes sense to give them those levels, no matter what their farm priority is. Well, this mid lane matchup has got to be really difficult for GPK and the Ember Spirits. And while he has done very well for himself, I think, in this initial three minutes, 
Uh, he's eventually going to start losing it pretty hard, right? Yeah, definitely. I think he's already doing quite well. I, I, I feel like the bear, the physical damage between the bear and the hero, as well as like Matumbo's starting items, like he went for a Blades of Attack Rush. He has a Blight Stone as well. It's a lot of physical damage, right? So I do really feel like that should be a Lone favored matchup, and you can see he is picking up steam, but you know, GPK is very good at the Sember hero. I think. Oh, wow. They're even going to give the absolute level three here, so he's going to get the level two fire spirits, that big damage upgrade. Denied. Dude, this is just liquid. Like, this is what liquid does. Mm. Secret is a team that does a little bit of everything. That's what's so interesting about them. I think somebody was mentioning on the panel about. I think it might have been Brian. He was mentioning that Secret, they'll split up in this way where they are controlling really ag the most aggressive areas possible of the map, Daya's but split. Like, they'll have a two attack. and a three split, as opposed to five. OG is about all five. Secret will do the same thing as five, but they'll also do a two-three split. Mm -hmm. like they, they seem to incorporate everything quite well, which, once again, mm -hmm. not human. That is inhuman. Yeah, and then that's kind of what has kept them on top for so long, right, is that the various things that teams do well, Secret seems to incorporate it into their play style, and so they very rarely do uh, they just don't seem to get knocked down. GPK, uh, they give Yapsor the early level three and he rotates in to kill GPK. Do this. Cool, really cool that he uses that level three to do that. Not often you see a rotation like that from a Phoenix, but with the levels that he has in Zai, I was gonna say maybe he's fine up here, but EG's doing a great job zoning him. Yeah, they're even going to go for the kill, but they got the spear. They only get a little bit more damage from Rocket Barrage, and if anything, Evil Geniuses, they press too hard. The Icarus Dive does actually hit crit there, but they had enough regen to be able to survive. And, uh, you know, like, it's cool the Absur is able to do that and everything, but how many offlaners do you think would be willing to put up with this kind of treatment, you know? Yeah, oh, nice man. spear. They're going to go for the kill here onto RTZ, but another round of Fairy Fires. This one coming from RTZ will uh, keep him alive alive and healthy for now, but they're certainly going to need some uh, regen coming in from one of those couriers. Gyro Io, such a pain to deal with. Like he, it's it's really hard to have any kill threat on these heroes if they're playing well. Yeah. You're laning against Crit and Arteza. Like he's going to have the fairy fire. He's going to have the salve ready to go if, if you ever do ever try to go on him. But they're gank here on the mid lane. Yeah, they want to be able to stop this Ember Spear from getting his level six, it seems. <laughs> Hard kill, though. I mean, the first kill, I, I did not expect it. You, you don't see that. Sure. But at level five... Oh, he's going to go for the courier instead. Dyer's <laughs> he's like, okay, maybe this kill is a little bit too hard to get. GPK is playing very defensive while he's trying to get his level six. Okay, as I say that, he's going to try and make a break here for the power rune, the toss over of the bear onto Matumba Man himself. But now, GPK is just going to get run down. Double root from the hero. Dyer's Beautiful. Matumba Man staying in front with the bear, body blocking GPK the entire way, and eventually he'll get another root, and eventually he will get the second kill of the game on the same man. GPK dies once again, and maybe even Fly's going to die here because they can dive the tower if they really want to, but no, it's not worth it. Better to push in the mid lane, get this creep wave killed before GPK comes back in. Ramsey's meanwhile has done very well in CS. Can he actually stay out of vision? Oh, slips right on by. They don't see him. They know he's somewhere around yeah. here, but uh, he's going to make a break for it. Okay. Oh, man, if he gets the curry. Side, if he gets this curry, it'd be really, really freaking funny. Oh, oh one shots it beautifully. Courier does not give you uh, your passive. It doesn't give you any damage. That's interesting. I would, <laughs> if you asked me, I would say that it probably does. So good, good to know. Learning Dyer's some Dota mechanics here. Yeah, very nice from Ramses. The Juke, and I like the fact that he chose to stay. I think if he goes back, it's just Jesus. putting him behind by a... I, I mean, they're just leaving Zai out to hang and dry here, and Zai is still... Man He's gotten level 5 against this dual lane, while Yapsor is constantly mid. GPK doesn't have a lane to finish up his Radiant level 6. He's gotten killed. half a level in the last, like, minute and a half. Sure. I mean, you know, this this does kind of make sense when you, when you think about Mars's job in this game. We were looking at the draft as they're picking, and it's like, they, man, they just need some sort of setup, right? Like, they have this crazy AA Phoenix. This already does a ton of damage. They have Lone Druid Morphling. These are greedy heroes. These are greedy heroes that are going to do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. They need some hero to start things. They need some hero to just put something on the ground that will 
set up for the team fight ultimates of the two supports of Secret. So just give him some levels. That's all he needs. Oh, yeah, sir. It's going to go for the courier and for the kill. That's disgusting. Takes a couple of tier two tower shots. Does manage to get the fire spirits out. Flying's going to try and control left that bear. Ramsey's, though, still taking too much in this damn bear. It's a nuisance. Somebody get it off of him. GPK, they try and come in, try and finish up the bear itself. And then maybe they could have gone for the kill on the Tumba Man. But it takes too much. He gets the fear off and he's away. He's fine. By Doesn't the way, give up the gold. By the way, top lane, Zai canceled the TP. He canceled the TP of Crit, who was TPing in to save him. Oh, wow. Must have speared him long range. Very clutch. Clutch spear and, uh, well. Chased away from the creep wave once again, but still not dying in this situation where most of the experience early on went to Yapsor and he's still recovering just fine. Maybe not net worth, but levels. He's still doing fine anyway. Uh, Secret do have a 1,000 net worth lead. They do need to push down. What is happening, man? Yapsor knows where all the couriers are. Animal abuse, man. What is this? Give it a break. You know the funny, the great thing is like giving him such a good early game means that he can pull this Radiant shit <laughs> yeah. behind yeah. enemy lines and he's got so many levels and items. Zai gets off the spear to the one solo tree that's there and Arteezy's got to be chased away here. Not in danger of dying, certainly, but still failing to get the kill on Zai, who they really just want to kick out of lane as quick as possible, Radiant's but cannot attack. seem to do it. He is just frustratingly always there. As once again, keeps his distance just enough to be able to stay outside of range of that second blast. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Puppy, going to be chased down by GPK. Good kill if you can get it, and he certainly does. Jumps away to his remnant, so nicely played by the mid laner of Evil Geniuses, the stand-in GPK. Yeah, they, they need him to start making moves like that, I think. This lineup from Secret is just... It's so greedy. I mean, th then again, you do have Arteezy who's farming quite well in this top lane. They're keeping as much pressure as they humanly can on to onto this Mars, you know, Gyro Io, it's hard to lane against, but not the most. Managed to get the arena lane. out. Looks like they're going to go for the kill onto RTZ with the Ice Blast coming in. Zai keeping them at bay there. Bulwark and a push back, but Crit, he's going to be in some trouble. Matumba Man, he's going to try and hunt him down with a bear. Uh, can't quite reach him, so instead, going for Arteezy. The bear is now no longer this arm. Matumba Man's close enough. They just need a root, but it's underneath the tower here. Still going to go for it, though. He got the last hit that he was going to go for. It turns out to be a root. He started running backwards, then he was like, oh, wait a minute, I got him. Good, good. Yeah, he's, he's stoked about that. He's like, oh, okay, all, all right. He was not trusting in, in Gabe in there. Gabe and delivered. And I was going to see, like, the one good thing for Evil Geniuses is, is they haven't actually lost a tower yet. Because it, it is very important to Secret's lineup, right? But now they just got the kill on the Gyrocopter and they're surrounding this tier one atop. But you can see Ramsey's actually pushing in mid during this time, so... He gets a lot of damage in. That's actually going to die. GPK, he's going to come in and see if he can kill these supports. Yapsor does have his level 6, but he doesn't have the mana to support his Supernova. So he's going to die, and it looks like Puppy's going to be chased down. GPK taking advantage of all that pressure in the top lane to lend a helping hand to Ramses, getting the mid tower, getting two kills. Yeah, great activity there from GPK, and I think this Underlord going mid is... It's, it's interesting, right? It's like you don't expect this hero to rotate at this point in the game. It's like you're an underlord. Like mid doesn't make any sense unless you're holding the tower, but he's making an aggressive rotation. And that's the thing. It's because he doesn't want to be bought versus a morphling. This is not a good lane. No. And if he's playing with the ember, they can actually get kills. They can actually pressure the tower by just running at it and killing anybody who shows up. And if it's not five, you can take the tower. So really great call from them to go for that play. Also, he's the best hero to stand in front of Lone Druid pushes, right? This when they true. made that trade off, Ember Spirit was suffering mid lane, and he was going to get pushed out of the lane, and then you're going to have that Lone Druid taking that mid tower, so they say, okay, Ramses, you're going to sit here, you're going to defend this mid tower, and uh, did did that and better by being able to take the opposing tower. Fly is certainly dead. His, his, he knows it now, but he was surrounded by heroes on all sides. He does. He did stat morph, I think, so he's yeah, got a lot of yeah. HP. I was like, why is he so tanky? Then I saw 1,300 HP. Yeah. Stole that one for the Morphling. Definitely great against this magic damage from Secret. Uh, that took a lot more to get that kill than I think Secret were hoping. They didn't have to use the Mars ulti, though, so that's always fantastic. Let's see, GPK is going to be building into uh, just the early stats. 
not atypical whatsoever, just going for the drums, trying to be as active as possible, because they know it's uh, it's that's a scary thing about Lone Druid and Morphling. It's like they're cores and they feel good late game. But if you're strong enough to win fights early, they're so good at destroying towers, right? They're so efficient awesome. at it. Lone yeah. Druid has this yeah. demolish. For sure. Morphling can just go full agility if he feels safe. Yeah, there are definitely some games where having this like dual core lineup, you know, Morphling, Lone Druid, where it can feel really unfair if you don't have a way to pressure or a way to stop them from farming. Like if you pick some counter to Morph Morphling in the laning phase, for example, it's a lot different. Oh, look, a spider. That's disgusting. Get this off my screen. And away it goes. And away, potentially Puppy goes. GPK throws down a defensive remnant while he goes for this kill. For some rotations, good enough for him. He's got his Radiant's boys to protect them. All right, this is going to sound extremely specific, okay. and that's because it is. But I want to point out that Zai went for Tranquil Boots on Mars. And one thing that I've noticed watching a lot of his replays is that his boot selection, it's never the same boots on the same hero. Like, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll see Phase Mars, you'll see Treads Mars, you'll see Brown Boots Mars, you'll see Tranquil Boots Mars. Like, well, I haven't seen him do Tranquil Mars, but he did it in this game. Uh, uh, this, this guy is very game-dependent on what item build he goes, even yeah. with boots. I I have seen him uh, do this before, and I think it was with Mars. Uh, maybe it was a pub or something, but it, he did it with the Soul Ring as well, right? Because it no longer gives that health regen. And so, especially if you're having a little bit of a rough game, if you're using Soul Ring, it just means you're always low yeah. and always susceptible to a kill. But here, he's able to remain at his peak, 1300 HP, even if he is only level seven. Right, and you actually, you have, you have some guys that are, did he still here? <laughs> oh, oh, Bulwark. That yeah. was Bulwark Steel. Good, well, yeah. well done by Zai. You can always yeah. tell the best Mars players or Phoenix players or something like that, they, they are aware of a Rubik on the other side. Just to break down this extremely specific boots thing even more, uh -huh. I think a big reason that he did it in this game is you've loaned your Morphling to frontline anyway, so he doesn't need to build to tank and frontline, and that's why I think that they sacrificed him in the lane too. Like he literally just needs to drop the arena and press his stun and set up for his team. Right. So like he can play like a support basically, and it's fine. He's an initiator slash protector for the egg. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. It's like he's got a very simple role in this game. You have this well outside of the landing stage. The landing stage not so simple. That was kind of hard, but no, it's it's easy. It's like all right, guys, I did my job. I'm a support now, and he's got a lone druid to go in. The bear has a million HP. The morphling has tons of HP if you stat morph. And it does make me wonder how, how quickly he'll try and rush the uh, the Blink Dagger. Once again, Bulwark stolen by the Rubik. Double damage drums, empowers me. Drums seems okay, too, just for the move speed. Yeah. Relocate coming in. Die. How's he going to respond to this? Throws out the arena, throws out the spear. It whiffs, and he does go down, but he's caught all these heroes inside the arena. The Ice Blast going down. Crit is not going to be able to relocate RTZ out of here, but Ramsey is here to create some distance. Does manage to get the Pit of Malice to slow down these heroes, but GPK is out of mana. <laughs> How did that happen? It looks like he committed a bit too much, and now Matub Manny is just going to have a field day with this. Just keeps on running out heroes, keeps on hitting him with the Baron eventually more kills will be had. So the, the problem with relocating to the mid lane is that no matter where the enemies are on the map, like oh. there is going to be somebody adjacent to the mid lane, right? It's, it's literally the middle of the map. There's going to be somebody in the jungle, somebody in the triangle, and then there's also the towers that are insanely close together to TB2. So yeah. that's often why you see, you'll see these relocates that are into side lanes. Like they're just so far away that you can't get to the relocate location to help the yeah, guy caught out. But the mid lane, to react to, right? right, the mid lane is very different. Yeah, especially, so maybe inherently that wasn't a good idea. Not only the mid lane, but also Mars, a hero that literally says, sorry, you have to sit here in this yeah, area you're for a while. Here. Yeah, it's, I get what they're trying to do. Like, he, this is the guy that is having a rough game, and he's a core, so he's got, like, the highest value guy that they can consistently kill, so they go for it. But And like we talked about, he's the ache protector, and he's also their best initiator. Oh, he tried to get the free end of spear. GPK is still going to get caught with the ice blast, and Nisha rolling in all over him. I love watching Zai stream because of this sort of shit that he goes for. Yeah. Like, it's just so, it's so silly, but when it works out, it's so cool. He always goes for those next level plays, and uh, oh well, press the secret. Oh They're going to focus on the easy play. That's Roshan. They've already built themselves up a healthy net worth lead. What? It's all the secret missing neutral items? All the tier twos coming back in, or are they just... I guess they don't, they don't need did, neutral items, neither does fly. Did they, have, they must have gotten, yeah, they got royal jelly. Did they get another passive? I don't see a mango tree. Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know.
Maybe they haven't dropped it. Maybe they haven't dropped it. They haven't really been jungling that much. That's true. They've Radiant been just sitting in lanes, which is, uh, you know, a good problem to have. Whereas EG, they've been jungling. I think Gyro and Io have been doing a heck of a lot of jungling. <laughs> Top tower so you're right, by the way. He is rushing the blink. Radiant not going to delay that anymore. Just do what it's, you know, it just Radiant's lets him do his job. I think probably blink into attack. BKB. I can't believe where he's at on the map right now. Jesus. Nobody from Evil Geniuses somehow runs into him. Instead, they're going to run into Yapsor. He's trying to get off the map, trying to float away, but he's stuck. The Rod of Atos Pit of Malice combination keeps you there for a very, very, very long time. So... I love this Underlord build. It's so much more active. Like, this is the only build that you can do on him where the hero actually feels Dyer's like you're doing something that's not just standing in front of the enemies. Yeah. Scanning. And he can do that, but... They're really gonna relocate. And uh, join into this mid lane, kill the Ancient Apparition, and I think they're just gonna leave the Eye to die here. Oh, they yeah, they see the little spot there. So... That was actually one of those. It was like simultaneously defensive relocate and offensive. They get RTZ kill, and uh, he gets away from that sticky situation that they were in. Fire Spirit stolen is going to be really big to try and protect against the bear, but it's not doing a whole lot against a Mask of Madness bear, it seems. <laughs> I mean, Tom is doing a lot of damage. This is just the result of him snowballing from this matchup that he's in, as well as Yapsor ganking the mid lane. Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, they really did identify, like, okay, we don't necessarily have uh, the best disables to be able to control up Ember Spirit, and Last Lone Druid is doing really well for his game. If he does really well for his game, he takes those early towers. That gives us a net worth advantage. Evil geniuses, meanwhile, they identify, okay, if we could stop Zai from getting his Blink Dagger, that'd be really big, because no he's way. their best source of initiation. He's just going to solo up Ramses. Ramses, he's going to die, and yeah, sure, sure, he's dead in return, but he's like, that was mega worth, my goodness. That's just a solo kill. 485 gold. He's supposed to be gold. the tankiest man. He's not the tankiest man. I guess suppose that's the problem with this Atos build is you can get literally solo killed by the enemy position four. Yeah. What level is uh, the Phoenix? Where would he put his skills into? I wonder how high uh, level of the Sunray he has. Yeah, two, four, four. He's got maxed out Sunray already. Yep, yep. Meteor Hammer going for the hal that Halberd next. I mean, he's gonna come back. He didn't use the supernova because you're like, well, it's level one. I'm gonna die anyway to a gyrocopter. Yeah, he's got the attack speed. With the tome he's got now, he's gonna be having a level two supernova in whatever team fight happens next. Evil geniuses. Yeah, feels like uh, things are beginning to get out of control, but maybe with the BKB, there goes a lot of damage, right? On. Yeah, yeah, it's uh. I'm wondering where, where, like, the damage comes from on these two cores. You know, this long druid and the morphling. And really, I think you have the damage to kill. They're going to run into each other here, and the initiation goes off first from Zai. Managed to get the arena with three different heroes. He locked in Ramses, too, so Ramses won't be able to dark push them out of here very quickly, especially with Tumba Man. Coming in to try and finish off the job. The Essence Ring is going to be able to bail him out. They're going to try and focus on the Tumba Man. Maybe not, actually. He's so tanky. GPK was going for Zai. Ramses was eventually run down by Nisha, and he's going to get fly as well here. Wait for him up in a second. That'll surely kill him. Back over to the side here where GPK gets speared up into the spear. Three dead on the side of Evil Geniuses and tower soon to fall. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, the thing is, the yeah. difference between this game and the last one is RTZ is playing a hero that actually likes getting a rapier. So when we're this far behind and we're talking about rapier, it's not so much of a meme. Uh huh. It's actually quite good. But usually when you go for it on Gyro, it's like BKB satanic rapier. And I don't know if he's gonna get the satanic. And I don't know. If he's gonna <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know how many 22 minute rapiers I've seen in my life. And yeah. It feels like that's what they need right now to turn this game around. A secret. Are currently taking down a melee barracks. And there's not a damn thing evil geniuses can do to stop it, it seems. Sunray. Keep it back. Nice spear into the range barracks that uh, almost brings down Ramses. He's going to be saved once again by the Essence Ring. Gets off the Pit of Mouse, holds in Nisha. Meanwhile, Matumban is going to be run down his range form here. They're going to deal with the Supernova as well. There's the arena. It blocks out the last two shots that saves the egg. Keeping Yapsor alive and forcing evil geniuses out. Usually the combo works the other way. Usually the egg is in the pit and 
you have just all this disruption that's happening. Mm -hmm. But perfect placement there. It's perfect also that Arteezy and Crit are standing obviously together because they're IO Gyro, so they're going to be on one side of that. Um, maybe it dies if there's a couple of people in the the actual pit, but... Going for Ramses this time, he dies, the mech. I think it might have been a bit too slow there from Crit, or maybe that was just that much damage from Nisha. Not sure which at this point, because he is super far ahead of everybody else. Now he's going to turn into a gyrocopter, running into them. Telekinesis, but that's the only hard stun they have. The rest of it is just uh, some various shackles, and uh, that, well, that doesn't really stop a Morphling from cruising around and morphing in his strength when he's in danger. That was what I was going to bring up at some point. It's just like, you have percentage-based damage from Underlord, but you don't have any save, like you don't have any stuns to ever catch this guy and be like, ah, he's in agility don't form, kill him. Oh, That's true. They don't have the they don't have the instant disable other than Rubik, but the Rubik lift is not super long duration until it's like ultra late game. Yeah. Then it's pretty good, but and, and highly unlikely that just a telekinesis is yeah, gonna be enough. You need follow up, but there isn't really any follow up other than the rocket. But when rocket is your best follow up, yeah, then you know I can understand why these odds are near three two two. Another beam number. I am a huge fan of the meme numbers. Radiance top tower. You have weed. Attack. You have throwing. You have Dyer's the other one. Do you have you heard of number magic? You sound like like 69 times three, 420 is equal to 1337, that sort of thing. I think it's called numerology. I have heard of that, yes. Radiance top tower is under attack. Can't even get the tier one tower before Anisha on the hunt. Dyer's he wants crit. Tower is under attack. Wants to take away that relocate. Crit separates himself, retethers himself onto the Rubik. Uh -oh. But That's eventually he will be found. Another Tether up in three seconds. That is far too long, though. Oh my goodness, look at Matumba, man. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. The rest of his team is on the other side of the map, but they're coming. And Matumba, man, is so tanky, it's going to take so long to kill him that by the time they do turn around, both their sides oh. spear first into the arena. Oh, I like that. I like that. That's a great combo. That's a hard one to pull off. It's that is that is one that uh, was hard. Like you almost couldn't pull that off before, but then they no, sped up the arena. You you couldn't. It was yeah. impossible before. Now it's possible. But I can tell you, man. I sat in a practice lobby trying to do that. You have to basically be spearing them when they're behind you and catch them with like the AOE, the radius mm. of them. And then, and then instantly press it on the ground. The ultimate. It's not easy to hit that, especially against an ember. It's. I mean, you have to get the angle. It's instant reaction time that you need to have. <laughs> Zai, looking, searching for that spear to catch somebody out of position. May have just put himself in a nasty position, but he does manage to get the Glimmer Cape. Not enough to be able to save him. So, evil geniuses, they have an opening here. They got a kill. They killed the bear, even. RTZ is going for the Scotty to try to counter the Morphling heal. We talked about, like, how do you burst this hero down? I suppose that's something. That's a way. Yeah, like they don't have oh, an option really to burst him so much as they just have to like... He changed it to a Lincoln Sphere, actually. He's trying to... Oh, really? Or maybe it was a Lincoln Sphere before, but that's that's the... It's a classic thing that people do as the Gyro versus the Morphling to prevent him from morphing into you. Sure. Coming a better Gyro. Sure. But it feels defensive. Yeah, you still have like a damage issue, right? Relocate to the other side of the Phoenix, but he still managed to get off the Icarus side. He pops his BKB now, the rest of the team backing away from the Supernova, but they've lost crit. They've lost, oh, okay, they do manage to steal Ice Blast. They can get away with that spell intact. It would be kind of nice. He's going to throw it out now. Try and go for the more play. Nisha may not be expecting this one. A big glass, and it looks like he's going to go down. A big, big kill for evil geniuses, all thanks to Fly. Now they're going to be able to kill that bear. That's a second death onto the bear. Meteor Hammer drops right on top of Arteezy. But, oh, the arena save. Could this actually bail him out? Managed to get the kill on a Fly. Mumtumma Man on the run. GPK. He is not able to chase, it seems Radiant's like. And that... Zai just saved him. Zai just got his carry out of there. He very likely will die in this situation as he spears up Arteezy. But a sacrifice well worth. Uh, Arteezy? He actually dies to Yapsor. Yapsor. He's cruising on out of here. He still has the Heaven Halpert as well. So they, they have nothing left in the tank to be able to chase him down. Ooh, that 3-4 duo of Yapsor and Zai. Dude, that was... That was some nice Dota. I hate to be that guy that's, you know, 
We all saw that, but Zai, how do you mechanically do all of these things within one game? That that baffles me. Usually it's like somebody does one thing that gets clipped on, put on Reddit or whatever. It's like Zai, he just does it in every single team fight. Wow. The saves, the spears. I agree with LD. Oh, it's really this. impressive. I was trying to reimagine that clip. <laughs> He's going to do it. Wow. And then the keyboard click on E. And then I was trying to think of that with Zai and his boots, but it doesn't really work. It doesn't work. He's doing really sick shit. Actually, you know how that works? In fact, it works exactly perfectly in this game. The bulwark. The him stealing the bulwark every single he time. He He's not the bulwark. Stuff. Oh, my God. He's a genius. Zai's a fucking god. <laughs> No, we're, but he's owning this game. We're not he's just... completely countered the Rubik. Yeah, we're, we're Look not. Look at him do it. He's going to do it. I can get behind people saying like, oh, you know, you're hyping too much up some some tier two situation. I mean, if you're not going to hype up secret, like what I, the hell I, are you going to hype I know, up, exactly, you know? Exactly. Like these, it's, oh man, they're just too good. I don't know. I, I like EG. They're either from our region, <laughs> I, you know, There's, but it's secret. Their AI. I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it until they, the AI eventually kills me when they get the ability to do so. <laughs> I don't think they've learned to do that yet. They're too busy killing in Dota. <laughs> well, let's hope they just keep focusing on Dota. That's why it's important that somebody does take down Team Secret so they still have more challenges within the game of Dota 2. Otherwise, they turn to real life. Radiance Just like Jarek said. Is under attack. <laughs> I mean, these <laughs> gotta throw those psychotic tendencies into the, the video game, you right? You do, you do. A lot of sociopaths in Dota. They do a great job. <laughs> Spear back into a uh, easy kill. So Ramses does not have buyback. Evil geniuses now have to play a four versus five when they couldn't even play a five versus five before. Now it's a three versus five. Think about a four versus five with a buyback of the Rubik here. GPK doing his best to be able to delay, but evil geniuses. They need to call on a miracle. They need to call somebody from the heavens down to be able to save them here. And maybe that's going to be Arteezy and Crit with Relocate. Or maybe not. Maybe they're just going to TP in and slowly walk in against Megas. That's weird. Okay. Uh, that's a 30-minute Megas. Even if Evil Geniuses kill Secret at this point in time, I'm not sure how hype I can get about it. They're going to try. Ancient Apparition gets shackled up, but Ramses, okay, Supernova right in front of their faces. Evil Geniuses, they're trying to go back in, but look at Zai, he's ready to pounce, ready to spear away anybody who would dare to threaten Yavzor. Arteezy healing up a little bit, Crit does manage to get him back to the fountain, but Nisha is just standing strong through all of this. GPK stuck inside the arena right now. The Ice Blast does manage to land on him, dodges the spear with the slighted fist. That was pretty nifty. They're going to relocate back into this position here. They've already joined in. The BKB going off from Batuba Man into the range form. Looked like Arteezy can actually get this kill, but what about Nisha. Nisha going to the back lines, quickly deals with the Ruby, catches him, stuck inside the Firestorm, gonna be taking a healthy amount of damage here with the rocket coming in, he eats the cheese, here comes a Meteor Hammer right on top of the Gyrocopter, bumped back by the Adaptive Strike as well, Nisha looking to be able to get out, no, no, he's gonna stick around, deal a little bit more damage, Yule Scepter up in the air, back into the pit he goes, still rooted up, Ancient Apparition, meanwhile, GPK just deals with him, okay, GPK immediately gonna be able to buy back, go for Nisha, Nisha, one versus four, trying to do what he can, eventually he will be dying here, Evil Genius is do hold and they're still make us <laughs> okay oh well, 72 seconds yeah if this wasn't 31 minutes into the game i'd uh -huh. say they can go down mid and end but it's 31 minutes into yeah the game. if they weren't down 17,000 net worth if there wasn't 32 minutes into the game if there wasn't tier twos up everywhere uh, evil yeah. geniuses could run down mid and, and maybe have a small chance of taking throne but you did list off a lot of things there that was a, a lot of things too many things to, to deal with. All right. Relocate in. Yapsor. Off map, bitch. That's not fair. <laughs> you can relocate anywhere on the map. But what if I go off the map, Jenkins? Wait, how did Artisi's career die? I think it died to creeps, maybe. That is entirely possible as we watch through this replay again and how evil geniuses just threw a multitude of, of, of like good op options, right? They managed to barely save Arteezy with a relocate back, back to the fountain. They play into a second life. Arteezy held onto his BKB and came into the, the second part of the fight with that BKB. And they cleared out everybody else except for Nisha. Left Nisha for last. 
because they know it's if they can't, they just can't burst him down. It's a long slog, so they pretty much have to deal with him being there constantly, root out everybody else before they can all focus on bringing the big boy down. And they did do that. Okay, that's that. Yeah, uh, I think Arteezy. If we uh, where's the divine rape here? Yeah, exactly. I know Click what you're thinking. We will. Uh, there it is. There it is. That's all you can really hope for. I mean, it kind of it's kind of unfortunate your courier dies to creeps, but I suppose it'll take a couple of minutes to farm that extra gold. Secret's looking to end though. They just they don't want to let him get a rapier. We're not going to take a 70 minute game. Yeah, Secret's looking at the clock. They're like, hmm, be nice to have an early night. You know, go to sleep before midnight. Maybe we should try that, boys. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, put evil geniuses to sleep, shall we? Put the pillow over their head. <laughs> I don't know if that's sleeping, Cap. I think that's something else. Only dreams now, evil geniuses. Only you will, dreams. You will dream of darkness forever. Arteezy on the front lines, gets speared away from Crit. Crit did have the tether back up, heals up. Arteezy, Arteezy throws down the covering fire there with the ultimate. Matumba Man in his bear form, you can see he's trying to do what damage he can. Nisha, meanwhile, he went into a gyrocopter and started lading damage into the tier fours and flat cannoned everybody else. And Arteezy, apparently they didn't even need Nisha. They are able to deal with him just fine. Ice Blast caught inside the arena. Ramses is done. Die back for the two of them. And that means it's a GG for EG. In secret, turn up. As many people probably would have expected.